How's it going, everybody? Dylan K. Johnson here, and welcome back to another training log. This week is going to be a little bit different. I decided to break up my maximum effort lower and upper body days into one video, and then I'll be releasing another video tomorrow with my dynamic effort lower and upper body days for week nine of this conjugate cycle that I am currently running. So, as you can see, we're starting off with a max effort variation being cambered bar squats, working up to a one rep max as the goal today. And I am not going to a box, which I typically do. And I'm also not using bands. I'm using chains today. So changes up a few things a little bit. And I really like how it feels, gives it a completely different dynamic to bands. It's not so much easier. It's just different. If you guys haven't used chains and you haven't used bands before, or if you only use one or the other, um, you just give them a try if you get the chance because it's a completely different experience, especially if you're able to use both of them. Those of you who do use both chains and bands, you'll know what I'm talking about. Just a very different resistance curve. But like I said, working up to a heavy one rep max, just kind of slowly warming up, getting the weight under, getting the weight on my back and just kind of getting comfortable with everything, getting everything loosened up. I've already gone through a nice solid warm up before I hit this first movement. So made sure my knees were really good and ready to go as well as my lower back because my lower back's been getting pretty sore lately with how heavy I've been going repeatedly. So definitely feels like I'm approaching the end of this training cycle and I'm looking forward to kind of a deload in the next couple of weeks here. But as you can see, going through, throwing on my belt, we have 150 kg or 330 pounds on the bar, plus approximately 30 pounds in chains. This will be my top set for today. And a little bit of a grinder, but overall moved pretty solidly, really happy with how it moved. So with that guy, it was approximately 180 kg. Oh yeah, a little bit of a celebra celebration dance there. Really happy about it. <laughs> But like I said, with that, it was about 180 kg at lockout or 396 pounds. So really happy with where I'm at on my squat and my deadlift, as I keep saying. But yeah, I'm just really happy with how my strength is progressing. And I am really excited to test my one reps coming up in about three weeks. Well, no, not even three. Yeah, about three weeks is when I'll be testing. But anyway, now moving on, I've dropped the weight down a bit and I did an AMRAP set. I believe I got like between six to eight reps, something like that. Really focusing on keeping my core tight here, my form as tight as possible. And then I'm going to move into just like five sets of doubles. So with this, the whole goal, this getting in some extra volume, going through the movement and focusing on keeping my core tight, keeping everything nice and solid and making sure I hit depth. So you can see I actually removed my safety straps there because they were kind of getting in the way. It's one kind of downside to using the camber bar is if you're using safety straps or um, pins, well, you can't really even use safety pins. Uh, you have to kind of get creative with how you set up safeties unless you're using like a monolift safety system, um, which one of these days I want to actually go through and build my own. I'll probably make a whole video on that when I do, but yeah, that's kind of one of the downsides of the camber bar, which it is what it is. I make it work and it still works all right. So I'm not too upset about it. Anyway, after I finished off with that, then I moved into some stiff-legged deadlifts, working those hamstrings and glutes, really focusing on driving the hips. So one thing I tend to do, and one thing you may have noticed, is with my accessory movements, the vast majority of them focus on hip hinging. So even here, as we come into the next set, or the next exercise, which is belt squats, um, oh, by the way, I did four sets of around eight to 12 reps on the stiff legs. And then we're hitting four sets of around 12 to 15 reps ish, kind of 10 to 15 reps, whatever it kind of felt like on this guy. But you can see I'm emphasizing the hip hinge. So I'm driving my hips into the machine as I come up, really focusing on squeezing and contracting my glutes, driving through my quads as I come down and come up. But again, hip hinge. It's one of the huge things that I'm trying to focus on, and it's one of the biggest things that I believe has helped increase the strength in both my squat and my deadlift, because I've never really done hip hinging specific movements, such as this guy here, a good morning, um, in the past. So being able to actually strengthen my lower back, strengthen my glutes more, my hamstrings, my posterior chain, I personally feel has helped and 
helped to increase both my squat and my deadlift dramatically. And it's one of the biggest things that I've been focusing on during this training cycle. So yeah, that's kind of the main purpose behind those. Um, with the good mornings, I just used the bar itself, just the camber bar it weighs about 85 pounds on its own. So that was more than enough that far into the workout just to get some extra volume in, fill the back up with a little bit of blood and get a nice pump going to finish everything off. Then I hit some calves, which I don't hit calves very often now, it seems. I did four sets of around 12 to 15 on this guy, just using the belt squat and kind of a DIY seated calf raise setup using it, which is another thing that this guy is really good for. Um, just kind of figured out a way to do this, and that's a paint bucket that I'm sitting on there. So, yeah, <laughs> you got to get inventive with what you got sometimes. But yeah, like I said, I haven't trained calves directly in quite a while, actually. Um, and they have surprisingly been filling out really nicely for me. Um, I'll do a little bit of a posing here after this guy, but after the calves, I moved into just a couple of core, well, just this core exercise here, some ab wheel rollouts for three sets of as many reps as possible. Um, I'm just going to speed it up so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me go through like 12 reps one of my favorite core exercises here. But like I was saying with my calves, I haven't done very much direct calf work in probably a month or so, but at the same time, my calves definitely look and feel like they're growing. And I attribute that a lot to just going heavier with these squats and everything else. Um, yeah, my, my calves haven't grown this much from direct calf work as they have been from doing these heavy squats and deadlifts and everything like that, which is kind of funny to me. I mean, I've tried everything under the sun for training my calves and I could never get them to grow. And now when I am not even focusing on them, they're finally starting to grow. So doing something right. I don't know what it is, but I'm doing it right. <laughs> maybe one day I'll have calves the size of my forearms. Actually, maybe I'll have calves the size of my biceps. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, moving on to the max effort upper body day. So this is the next day here. We're going to be doing a variation for bench press. And as you can see, it is pin presses. So I'm stopping the bar roughly two inches to three inches above my chest. It's a little hard to see from all these angles, but working up to a heavy one rep max, which I believe is this set here. And it is approximately a hundred kgs or no, there's 70, 80 kg on the bar plus about 30 kg in or in chains. So worked up to like 250 pounds at lockout. Um, bench is definitely something that has been slowing down this week because it's just been, it's starting to get fatigued. I can really feel with all of my training, I'm starting to get fatigued. I might be pushing myself a little bit too much. So I've kind of started backing off a little. Um, just adjusting my training to kind of match my fatigue level. But anyway, after I hit that one rep max, then I dropped the weight down to about 80%, hit an AMRAP. I think I got like six reps on it. And then I dropped down to five sets of triples um, with the 80% of that one rep max that I hit on this guy, just really trying to focus on pausing all the momentum at the bottom, resting for a second, or well, not necessarily even resting, just pausing and then driving back up. So yeah, definitely one of the tougher uh, variations that I've done just because that is like right at one of my weakest points, which means to me that I need to start working it a little bit more, finding other movements to target that specific location. But anyway, yeah, that was the main movement for my maximum effort day there. And then here is the warm up getting into my max effort pull day. So I'll have to go through my full training structure once I finish this program. But with this kind of last three to four week cycle or phase of my um, training, I've changed everything around from your typical conjugate style training, which would be a max effort lower day, rest, max effort, upper day, rest, dynamic effort, lower day, dynamic effort, upper day, and then you do, um, and then you rest after that and repeat the cycle. Would be your typical conjugate style of training, conjugate method breakdown. 
However, the last like three or four weeks, and this could attribute could be attributing to the amount of fatigue that I've been starting to have, is I've actually been doing more of a push pull legs, push pull legs with conjugates thrown in. So I would start off, or actually legs push pull, legs push pull. Um, so I would start off the week with a max effort lower body, which you guys saw, and then I'd hit a leg workout afterwards. And then the next day without resting, I'd move into max effort upper body, which is the bench session, which you saw followed by an upper body workout, focusing on chest, uh, with some accessory movements for shoulders and triceps thrown in. So essentially a full push workout. And then the next day without resting, I would focus on a max effort lift for deadlift specifically followed by a back workout and biceps. So a pull workout. Um, and then I would repeat the cycle for the next three days, changing my emphasis from chest, triceps, shoulders to shoulder emphasis with chest and triceps secondary, and then a, another back and bicep day after that. So essentially I'd be going six days in a row, max effort days for three dynamic effort days for three. And I think it's definitely been starting to show signs of wear on my nervous system and just taxing my body. So these next couple weeks, I'm going to be switching it back to more of the typical conjugate style just to allow myself more time to recover, especially as things start getting heavier and heavier. I don't want to be getting myself too fatigued and risking injury, um, which is another part of the reason that I've been focusing so much more on my warmups, which is what you're seeing here. This is just a solid warmup that I'm doing before I get into my max effort pull session and I'm basically going through trying to warm up my hips, warm up my hinging, knees, joints, everything there, back, pretty much full body warm up. Um, went through, hit the uh, hit the belt squat for three different variations of five reps each, just a typical belt squat uh, movement, typical squat movement. Then I did five hip hinging movements where it was similar to like a good morning or a stiff leg deadlift, just focusing on the hip hinge. And then five where I was focusing more on quad engagement. So trying to keep my shins vertical and putting all the emphasis on my quads. And then I superset that with five to eight reps of pull-ups. Did that for three total uh, supersets. And then I moved over here to some lat pull downs and I'm just using some extra bands on here um, to kind of change the resistance curve and again warm up my lats warm up my upper back my lower back get everything fired and ready for a nice heavy deadlift session uh, one thing that kind of sucks is today that I the day I'm actually recording this I just sold that lat pull down machine so definitely kind of sucks moving forward. And the funny part is I actually just got my anniversary present from my wife, which if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'd know what it was. But um, it was a mag grip lat pull down attachment, the pronated close grip attachment. And that literally just came in today. And of course, today I sell my lat pull down machine. <laughs> So pretty typical, of course that happens, but nice thing is I purchased that guy plus a set of Ironmaster dumbbells for, I believe it was around $300 total. I sold the Ironmaster dumbbells for 300 bucks a couple weeks back, and I just sold this guy, the lat pull down for another $300. So essentially I made 300 bucks on that deal total. And sometime next week, I should be getting in my functional trainer, which I ordered from Rep Fitness, the PR, the FT-5000 um, functional trainer that I ordered over Black Friday and was on back order. So hopefully I got the shipping notification on Monday this week or no, Tuesday this week. So hopefully it'll be in sometime next week. Um, maybe, maybe before Christmas, we'll find out. We'll see. Anyway, I've been talking a lot and kind of ignoring this. As you see, moving into the max effort lower body variation, working up to this is the top set here of deficit deadlifts. So no accommodating resistance, just straight deficit deadlift, working off of a three inch deficit. And I worked up to, what is that? 50, 100, 150, 170. 190, so 190 kg, which I don't know offhand exactly what that is. That's like 340 pounds. No, not 340. 300. And, it's like 330-ish pounds, something like that. So you guys can do the math. But 190 kg for a three-inch deficit. 
that's really fucking good so yeah pardon the language that's really damn good i'm really happy with that and then i dropped it down to 80 percent hit um six or five sets of doubles I was supposed to do an amrap on the first one but i would not be able to get more than two i was just smoked after that single <laughs> you always got to have fun in the gym right but anyway that was the max efforts for this week Stay tuned for the dynamic efforts coming out tomorrow. So don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and I will see you in the next one. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, live on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, for the record, for the record. For the record. For the record.